<laughs> okay, guys, uh, I will just give a walkthrough uh, again. See, what is the purpose of the data provider? Okay, if any method annotated with the data provider, the particular method we will use for uh, storing the data. So the method will act as a container for our test data. Okay, the main purpose of the data provider, uh, we know to store it. How, what is the type of data we're going to store in uh, that particular method we have to learn today. So here for any, uh, for example, consider a login functionality here. So for a login functionality, what are the test cases we're going to write? First of all, a positive flow. In a positive flow, uh, we will have the valid username, valid password. And we have a general three negative test cases. Uh, you can see what are the things, invalid username, valid password, valid username, invalid password. So these are the very general test cases we will write uh, for uh, login functionality in any application. Okay. So if you need to ask me, uh, I know uh, um, without data word, can I write the test cases? Yes, you can write that. But then what is the use of data provider? So here the data provider is not only uh, help us to storing the data, but it'll help us to uh, reduce the duplication of the code. Okay. So you may, you may have the same steps uh, for positive negative, but the data will change. Okay. So in this scenario, uh, you know, you have to write um, uh, again and again those steps. So uh, then you should change, change with the other data, but in the data provider, uh, just we will have the same step and the same test method. Um, Okay, um, but the data provider will have different set of data. Automatically it iterates and it will uh, generate the test results. So that is the functionality of data provider in the test engine. Okay, so this uh, kind of functionality, uh, this kind of process has a one terminology. It's called a data driven testing. Okay, so what is my, now, uh, what is meant by data driven testing? So data driven testing is nothing but, so uh, we are writing our script code and separating the test data from the script. So instead of hard coding in the script, so we are simply separating our test data and we are iterating the um, particular functionality. Here, nothing but the retesting with a different set of data. Okay. We, in the manual testing, we will call it as a retesting. And in a, coming to the in automation, we will call it as a data driven testing. So there is nothing different. Okay. So now uh, this kind of whatever the tool supports data driven testing, those kind of tools we call it as a data driven uh, tool or a data driven framework. Okay, so this is the terminology uh, we should remember uh, whenever any um, a tool we are describing. For example, if someone asks you uh, the test engine support which type of framework, so we have several type of frameworks. In that, the test engine supports data driven. Okay, that kind of answer we should give whenever someone asking to us. Okay. Uh, let we will see the practical implementation how uh, this data provider is working. Uh, see, Sazi, okay. We keep a class the provider and um, go. So, in a data provider. What else we call test public uh, void? So what we'll say test case. So let me import this. And what else we having? So here, what is the data provider? It is an annotation. Okay, so annotation means we should keep on a method. So here the data provider is one of the annotation. So we should write a data provider. Mm, say it is saying, okay, method I will write. Test case. Instead of test case, I will change it to data, data set. Let's say it is a data set. No, try to put this nice. Okay. Now, uh, where I should keep the uh, data? So uh, we have the two methods. One is a test method. Another is a data provider uh, method. So in this method, we, we need to store our data. Okay. And we should return that. So uh, we should store the data and we should return that. 
Okay. So here I need a username and password. Okay. Suppose we having a multiple data or a multiple values. Uh, what type of variable I should use? See, now you tell me username, uh, which kind of data? Which data type? String. Username? String. 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 Uh, coming with the password? String. String. Uh, string. As of now, we will consider this both as string. Okay. So, uh, tell me the syntax for the array. Uh, Square versus string. Two oh, string. String. Mm. So, which type of array I should use? Uh, single dimensional array or uh, two dimensional array? Two dimensional array. Multi dimensional array. Mm -hmm. Two dimensional array. New string. I will say data. Equal to new, new, new string. 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 We actually we can end it like that or uh, open a flower press and write the data directly. Here I need to specify the how much of data, uh, sorry, the length of the array I need to specify here. Okay. Uh, we having so four, four I have. So let me keep four and four. Um, constructor is all. Yeah. See? Okay. Now, data. Uh, so tell me, uh, I need to store a valid username and valid pass. So, here, how should I do that? Data I one. Start zero. 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 Equal to. Is it correct? Flower braces. Yeah, flower braces. Per Okay, so I will keep it as a valid username. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. The value is is only in the first cell, isn't it? Mm. So valid password. Do you guys know the matrix? Uh, when you are learning in child class in the school, you will get an in tenth class. I guess you will get a matrix yes. chapter. The same concept here. Right. Yes. Here we want to change. Here we want to have four rows and two columns. So, so uh, here zero is in a uh, row number. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this zero is represented column number. Okay. For example, uh, if I have first row, first column. Uh, yeah. So it has index zero and one. And first row, second column. It has a um, index one for second uh, column. Okay, like it, we need to specify. And coming to data, let me copy this. Okay. Hmm. So one, and this is going to be one. So what we discussed in the notepad, invalid username. Invalid username. Okay. Again, we'll try with the. Uh, this is going to be two. Two. So invalid user. We have valid username. This is going to be invalid password. Okay. And uh, one we have. So data. Three. So it is both are invalid. Okay. 
So, see, uh, I have here only four um, four sets of data. Okay. Here, see, we're having four sets of data. So, for your understanding, four sets of data. Okay. Now, I should uh, return this. Why I should return this? Why? Because uh, suppose uh, we, ha we haven't written this, so this method, the test method, will will not get access uh, of this data. Okay. So we should return that. So change them with the type string, sorry, uh, data. So here, uh, this is a, a setting of our data provider uh, method. Now we need to access this data uh, from the test method. How we have to? So there is an uh, attribute. Okay, uh, called data provider. Uh, let me try this. Uh, data provider equal to. So, see how how should I? <clears throat> here I need to provide the name. So what? Name. Which name I need to provide here? We can give the method data name, provider. or else we can Actually, give a separate provider. name to the data provider. Data provider and can be given. So that we can, uh, as of now, I didn't and have any name for the data provider. So that is the reason I'm giving a method name here. Method. Okay. So data provider is an attribute. So for this attribute, where well, you know, I'm initializing with the data set, the which is the method name of the data provider. Okay. Now, uh, okay, I gave the data provider. Someone they should store the variables. So I need to pass the parameters here. Okay. So how many parameters? Two parameters I need to pass here. String username. A string password. Okay. No, I want going to do username uh, plus let me get space. Okay. And this is a password here. Okay. Okay, we will try it. Uh, whether it is a okay or not. Uh, so nice in the chest. Uh, something went wrong. Okay. Oh, then cover is So it is saying only one method. This has no defined parameter, but is data by mm -hmm. What happened? Anything? I mistake here. I think the CISO, we need to add plus user name. Yeah, username. In the uh, declaration of Plus adding, we have uh, four uh, rows and two columns only. So it is saying. Actually, two columns and three, uh, four, four, rows. Uh, four rows and two oh, columns. Rows and two columns. Uh, <laughs> So uh, in string of four, instead of in line 16, it should be four of four and two. Yes. Yes. Four rows and two columns. Four rows. Oh, four, yeah. four rows. Four rows. Four and two columns. Two columns. Mm. This is really right. Test in the test. OK. Yeah. See, uh, we having the four test cases here, uh, different set of data, and you can see the number of passes four. But suppose yeah. if there is no data provided, so what we going to do? You write all the steps uh, in a different uh, annotated test method, uh, then you will execute. Okay. So instead of doing that, so we have a data provided with the help of this, uh, we can write uh, this kind of uh, uh, test cases. Okay. Uh, that is the importance of the data provider, and that testing is providing some uh, uh, extra functionality here for the data providers. Not only uh, data provider may the same, class, we can maintain a different class also. Okay, so for example, if they, the data provider is a different class, how we should uh, call that? Um, okay, we'll try that. Data provider class. Mm. We'll copy this. 
Okay. No, something we should do here. Okay. Data provider class, I guess. So data provider class equal to data dot class. Come. Change to data provider class. Okay. Okay. This is kind of if you provide this kind of syntax, so it will go to the uh, particular class. Oh, I'm specifying data provider class. Okay. It will go to the data provider class. So uh, it will search for the method. Uh, what are the name we are giving here? And it will execute the code. So I'll, I will comment on. Yes. The testing the test. Okay, see? So it went to the data provider class and it tried to find the method, whatever the name we are providing, and we are providing the data set. So that is the reason um, it executed. And not only this, we can specify uh, which type of, for example, I don't want to give the name, uh, whatever the name we are giving, data set we are giving here. So instead of data set, I can give some uh, name also. So name equal to, uh, I will probably say it is a login test data. Login test data. I will take this and I will go to the data provider. So, okay, uh, where it is here. So, instead of data set, well, it is a login test data. Okay. Mm, that's it. See, so you got the point, guys. Uh, these are the ways uh, we can implement the data provider in our uh, program. So, any doubt till here, guys? No, sister, it is clear. No, sister. Mm -hmm. okay. So, what else we can discuss today? Uh, remove all the so, uh, here we have some attributes. So, let me check that. Uh, we'll discuss that. Uh, we have half an hour more time. Attributes. Okay. So, in attributes, uh, we discussed data provider, data provider class. Uh, depends on group, uh, depends on method. We will discuss when we're uh, going to talk about the test ng XML. Um, and description. Description, I already told you. Description is nothing but uh, it will, uh, whatever the we kept in our description, it will consider the test case name. Okay. Whenever you are writing any test case uh, in a test engine, uh, consider it as a test case name. Okay. So that is the purpose of description. And coming to the enabled, okay, the enabled uh, attribute is help us to. Uh, for example, uh, I don't want to execute some uh, test cases, or I want to use only some test cases. Actually, these um. Uh, okay, mm. These annotated test test uh, whatever the annotated with the test those are actually enabled equal to true. Okay, it has enabled uh, boolean value true. Suppose I don't want to execute or I want to disable uh, some uh, test cases while executing. At the time I will use the enable attribute. Okay, with the help of that I can disable my test case and remaining test case will execute. Uh, uh, that. Okay, that is the purpose of the enable attribute here. And okay, we will try this. And okay, okay first of all, we'll try with the uh, okay. Next, we'll copy this method. We will say so. I will name the description. I'll try to give a name here uh, description. Description so, test case one. Okay, we can remind yeah. test case one. Description not required. Uh, I will name it as a disable okay disable test case. So disable test case I'm keeping as enable enable equal to true. So is it correct? Uh, enable oh, that's hmm. so uh, okay, we will change to false. Sorry. So if we keep it as a false, um, so we are telling to the test engine, okay, don't execute this. So nothing but we are disabling uh, this test method. We will execute that whether it will work or not. Uh, it is saying some verbose. Something is wrong. Some verbose. 
what happened not yes sir found why we'll try again uh, from my data provider class has an issue i think yeah sir yeah. i think some other class i have executed yeah. uh, see here console output so here we have only the test case okay this didn't execute it okay if we keep it as a true actually those are defaultly true uh, we are making it as a false if uh, like because of the, I, I need to disable that method now you see so it has eight test cases okay all the eight test cases got passed you can see the disabled test case now no it is executed. enabled as false it should run uh, that test case method no? in in line 9 cheshner so these two are independent okay yeah these and are uh, two different test part? cases these are okay. two different test cases uh actually these two test cases uh, have enabled true defaultly yeah but we are disabling one test case uh, nothing but one test uh, annotator method we are disabling that so that is the reason to execute only um, what are the test case uh, 8 to 11 oh, uh, yes yes uh, but why is that purpose error? I mean, what was the problem? Where? Uh, which? Where? I we mean, we had an error right now, right? Uh, the verbose. Previously. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That maybe oh. I have run this class. So this class I have okay. run, run it. Okay. So that's the reason we got that. So nothing but it is saying uh, no tests are found. Saying there is no test annotator method. There is no test case in your oh, class. So you ran so the data reason. provider class. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we got that error. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, enable completed. Uh, we will check with the expected ex exceptions. Uh, this is like a, a bit high, high concept. Uh, not, not a high concept, uh, but now as of now, if I say this, uh, you will get confused with that. So ex expect that. Ex uh, we'll keep it as an attribute. So in the attribute, we will say, I need this kind of exception. Okay. If this exception is not thrown, uh, the test case will fail. So this kind of uh, functionality it has. We will try this once. So test method. Guys. Okay, so this is a we are keeping it as an expected exceptions. So in expected exceptions, um, we going to keep so where it is not back. Okay, this is an attribute. We'll copy this uh, instead of here. Enable. I will place it here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in expected exceptions, I need to specify which type of exception uh, I need to throw. So here I'm going to throw the runtime exception. Uh, I'm expecting a runtime exception. Runtime exception. So uh, convert cat. Okay, got it. So runtime exception so dot class. Okay. I am expecting a runtime exception. Okay, but here I am going to throw. Uh, tell me how to throw the. I already told you that the uh, exception concept. No, tell me I need to throw an uh, interrupted exception. How should I do that? Is uh, the exception name throw space runtime exception oh. or expected exception? In the try try block. Throw throw. I need to throw the interrupted exception. Tell me how to do that. We can do that way catchment. We way catch method. We have to handle that. Try catch method. Okay. How do you try that? Someone is saying try catch method. We will go with that. Uh, okay. Uh, so, so tell me where is what I need to keep here. Uh, interrupted exception name reference variable and 
But what do we try in try block, uh, Viresh? Mm. See, I need to throw the exception. I don't want to cast the exception. Yeah, we can directly write throw space interrupt. Uh, After session. method name, throws interrupted. Throw. Exception. It is not throws. Throws. throw. Throw. Oh. After method mm. name, public void accepted. Okay, exception. in the signature, do you say? In the signature, yeah. Throws interrupted exception. Interrupted exception. You need to change the spelling, I guess. Change to oh, interrupted First. exception. Okay, I will execute this. Uh, let's see. So it is saying it got failed. Uh, we don't know why it got failed. Tell me why it, it got failed. Uh, any, any reason? I mean, it is uh, when we write throws in the signature, it should have something that is expected to throw an exception, but we don't have anything here. So I what I feel is in line number 20, if we write throw space interrupted Any? exception, that will throw it, uh, Shishidhar. I think uh, you should revise the exception concept, guys. Uh, so here we are not throwing the exception. We are handling the exception. Okay. The throws keyword is will uh, help us to handle the exception during the uh, compile time. So whatever exception we're going to handle uh, during the compile time, check the exceptions. Okay. The throws check keyword exceptions. is to handle the exception. So to throw the exception, so we have different syntax, new, throw, throw. okay. Uh, so here I need, I need a runtime exception. So that is the reason uh, you throw. So I'm processing a constructor here. Yes. I create in my own exception, user different exception like. Mm, so throw. instead of here, yeah, can we write in the method like this? We are saying syntax error. So what I do is if uh, true equal to why it is saying syntax error why because that is syntactical. Uh, okay, this is hmm. I not require this if block also. So here we are uh, throwing random exception. So that is an one run as test in the test. See the five test case got passed. So that is the purpose of expected ex exceptions. Okay. Okay, we are throwing the random exception, and even the, the particular um, test method also expecting the same uh, exception. So that is the reason test case got passed. And we have one more attribute for it is invocation count. Okay. Shishidhar, uh, can you please uh, give a glance at the the previous ex expected exceptions? I mean, the overall in one shot, please. I mean, if we okay. if you are expecting any ex exception from a test mm. method, uh, then see this expected exception attribute. Okay, <laughs> if we pass, suppose we are expecting any exception from the execution of particular test case. Okay. <laughs> Uh, for example, if any test case are failing for a because of a particular reason, okay, and yeah. it is throwing us some exception. Hmm. So we need to handle handle the exception. So there is a way we can handle with a try catch, okay, hmm. or we can uh, handle with some throws keyword where we can handle some checked ex exceptions. But hmm. here in a test ng, we have another way of handling the exceptions. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. These expected exceptions, uh, sub, here, uh, you suppose we um, pass any attribute value. Here I am passing a runtime exception as a class. Okay. It is expecting a value of a class. So that is the reason runtime exception is a class. Uh, I am giving a dot class, runtime exception dot class. Okay. So here now we are specifying, uh, I am expecting a runtime expect exception from this test method, from this execution. Okay. 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 Right. Okay. So that okay. is the reason here in line number 21, I am creating a new exception. Okay. By using throw new runtime exception. Right. Right. So it will throw the runtime exception during the execution 
and and even i am specifying i am expecting a runtime exception so that is the reason it's going to handle the this particular exception right so if we expect any exception from any test method we'll just specify as as uh, in line 18 we will not specify the exceptions here for you uh, as i'm to know the purpose of it that is the reason i kept the throw throw new equal runtime exception in real time uh, we will not we will not going uh, expertly we are not going to throw any exception so from the right, code right. we will get some kind of exceptions we will handle that okay okay yeah yes yes that got, got it thank you Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, here we see what we have. Uh, next, coming with the invocation con. See, guys, whenever if you go to any interview, uh, okay, those guys will definitely ask about invocation count, invocation timeout, priority timeout. So these kind, definitely those guys will ask. Okay. Why? Because this is a very basic concept. Uh, whoever uh, having uh, skill on the test engine, definitely those guys will know about these uh, attributes. Okay. Okay. Um, invocation count. How? What is the Invocation count, invocation count, what else we have? Mm, invocation timeout. Uh, first of all, we'll discuss about the timeout. Then we can jump to the invocation count. And, mm, okay. Test ng, so oh, 7 o'clock. Um, timeout. Change to timeout. Okay. So change to timeout. So here, what it expecting is something I will give like a three thousand uh, milliseconds. So timeout, timeout. Okay. See here, we are describing this test case should execute within this timeout. Okay. If the test cases. Uh, out of this timeout, session will fail this test case. Here I am specifying a 3000 milliseconds. So 3000 milliseconds, nothing but three seconds. If this test case uh, keep on executing more than three seconds at a time, uh, session will fail that particular test case. Okay, so that is the purpose of this timeout uh, attribute. So the dot slip. Uh, so we are giving some time more than 400, 4,000 seconds. Uh, so it is throwing interrupt again as around try catch. Let's see. See, it failed one test case. Why? Because the metal come data part didn't finish the, within the time mode. Three thousand milliseconds. So that is the purpose of this time mode attribute. Okay. Now we will jump to the uh, which are type of attribute invocation count and invocation timeout. Okay, so what do you mean by invocation count? So invocation count is nothing but we are uh, iterating. Uh, suppose uh, I need to execute this particular test case number of times. Okay, I will use the invoca invocation count. Uh, so we'll, so we will specify some kind of number uh, that particular number of times the same method will be invoked. So invoked is nothing but it will execute. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, we'll try with um, uh, take one more test. Copy this. Copy this uh, rate of test. So okay, test on now. Mm. Uh, well, what else we have? Invocation count. Invocation. I will copy from here. Control C. Okay. Suppose I need to execute this test case uh, for uh, two times. Okay, so I will keep the invocation count as two, and um, I will keep this method also. Invocation count. So invocation count. So for invocation count, I need to execute this method and two times. Okay, for this so this. Let me say this invocation count function. Okay. Now we'll see uh, run as test in the chest. So total number of test cases are eight. Uh, seven pass, one failed. The failed one is this one uh, because of the timeout error. Uh, 
and the remaining it executed this uh, invocation count test case executed two times uh, where i should see invocation count see first of all it executed invocation count and later uh, um, because of some in between some process uh, 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 later on after some time it executed the second time okay so in between them it executed some few uh, test cases okay so invocation count is nothing but number of times uh, we are invoking a particular test method. So that is the purpose of invocation count attribute. Now we have a invocation uh, attribute. So invocation timeout attribute. So what is the purpose of this? Okay. Mm. We'll go check here. Uh, so, so invocation timeout is nothing but uh, suppose we are invoking any method. So how much time it should take to complete the execution? So we, we are specifying some number about uh, 3000. Okay. Um, so we will say some thread or slip, uh, some thread or slip equal to 2000. I'm not sure, uh, it will execute or fail. So I'm going to try catch, uh, run it. So invocation count executed. Okay. Second time it executed, uh, sleep. Some interrupt, uh, sorry, some interrupt exception got, uh, rising between them. So it failed. Why? Because within the um, 3000, those two uh, invocation count got, got didn't executed. So that is the reason we got a interrupted exception. Okay. So it says in in 3000 milliseconds, this method should invoke for two times. Is it just that? Mm, so then the maximum here you can see the maximum number of milliseconds that the total number of invocation on this test method should take. So nothing but uh, in the 3000 milliseconds. Okay, in, in between 3000 milliseconds, these two invocations should be complete. Okay, okay. did you guys understood this? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. sure. Suppose uh, we are not mentioning the invocation count. Okay, we will see what's going to happen. Similarly, timeout uh, method, it has taken like that only, maybe. Mm -hmm. So, some matter it raised. Uh, so nothing okay suppose uh if you are not giving the invocation count the invocation timeout will be ignored okay see even if you are giving that it will test engine will not consider that why because you are not mentioning the invocation count so those are two are uh, independent sorry uh independent De uh, uh, it means one doubt fish there. It means uh, if you uh, mention particularly the invocation uh, uh, time, uh, this invocation count uh, at the time only, that invocation timeout will uh, work uh, like that, okay. no? Mm, yes. But we can use only once for uh, only uh, okay. invocation count also, no, sister? Without you using can individually go with the also. invocation count. No, first of all, I, I shown with the invocation count, no? Initially, ah, yes. you can go with the invocation but count. For invocation it will work uh, but for invocation timeout, we have to uh, use invocation count. Mm, yes. Uh, so what else? Uh, what we have next? Uh, the priority. Okay. Mm. So priority is nothing but we already know you, are, you have tried many times. Uh, the priority is nothing but we are prioritizing our test case which should execute faster. Okay. The lower priority. Sorry, the number of the so um, we will say priority equal to one, which which having the least number value, it will execute first. Okay, if so I say priority equal to one, it will ex uh, and I have one more test method priority equal to two. What I have a least priority number, it will execute first. Okay, um, we'll try two methods. Uh, so I will say priority. Come on, priority. Equal to one. Is it correct? Control shift two. Change to priority. Nice. Now, uh, priority for this um, invocation count and planning priority execute should execute two. Okay. And I'm now this data provider. I'm keeping for a uh, priority equal to three. Okay. Now you guys tell me. Which uh, test method will execute first? The priority one. 
that's about the priority and what else we having uh, this is about a thread pool size uh, thread pool size nothing but suppose uh, we having a multiple set of data or multiple times we are invoking uh, so the thread pool size will help us to uh, increase the uh, number of threads at the time um, it will execute in a different time instead of executing the same thread so that is the purpose of thread pool size uh, this we will mainly is na we have any huge data at the time so instead of depending on uh that suppose here you go here you see um uh, the data provider and um, the remaining test cases will execute in the same thread if you are going with a thread pool size at a time it will execute in a different thread internally this it will happen okay i will try this uh, i am not sure it will help you better so thread pool i am saying is a priority thread pool size equal to i will say 4 okay so uh, Say so for here, uh, I'm commenting this. What else is there? Okay, excuse. Okay. See, uh, it is executed, but um, you can't see it. How 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 it is. So here in the first thread, executed, and. Uh, This is a uh, another thread, <laughs> like that. Yes, do you have any doubt in attributes of testing? Yes, <laughs> definitely should get a doubt. Uh, yeah. If you don't have any doubts, I will explain the uh, question to you. Okay, see guys, here I'm using the attributes in a test level only. I'm not using it here beside the before method or after class or before suit or something else. We are not. I'm not using these all um, attributes uh, beside the those annotations. Why? Because These annotations specifically designed for a test case, nothing but test annotation method. Okay, we have some uh, attributes which will uh, work for the uh, remaining an annotations also. Okay, so that is the task for you guys. Uh, go through the internet and find the what are the attributes uh, are supporting the remaining uh, annotations. Uh, just go with some practice with that. That's it. Okay, these are all annotations confined to the test method. Is it, Shishta? Mm, yes. Okay, rest on that. Okay. Perfect. Okay.